Welcome to the first in a new series called Out and About, and this one features the York Model Engineering Society, my first brief visit to this excellent miniature railway. In between the two major pandemic lockdowns, I joined this club, but this is the first time I've visited. And it turns out that I didn't pick the best day, because they only have public running days at the end of each month. However, there was still plenty to see. I wondered what was going on with this engine, and the owner explained that he'd had a boiler test. And most unusually, the boiler tester asked for the fittings to be removed so they could be checked for what is known as desinkification. Desinkification can happen to brass fittings when they're screwed into a copper boiler, and the electrolytic action of dissimilar metals causes the brass to lose zinc and therefore become weak. However, I've only ever seen desinkification of brass fittings when there's been a slight leak around the brass fittings. Anyway, the engine passed its hydraulic test and it's back together, ready for a run, but unfortunately not today. While I was looking at this engine, a very happy-looking man went past on an electric diesel. This is the very popular design called a Sweet Pea. Castings, drawings and ready-built parts are available from Blackgate's Engineering for this model. The owner was telling me that he'd recently descaled the boiler with a commercial kettle descaler. And this is what he had to say about it. Glass of water. Yeah. Oh, I was getting a face full of water. Priming then. Priming. Yeah. So it's a, it's a result of that descaling. Yeah. I think the cause of the priming after the descaling was probably due to the fact that not all of the lime scale had been dislodged. The owner did mention that on the second blowdown after the descaling, quite a lot of solid material came out of the boiler. Priming is a common problem and usually settles down after two or three steamings and blowdowns. Time now to light the fire, and this is quite an unorthodox way of doing it. A layer of firewood and then another layer of charcoal soaked in methylated spirit. This job is made much easier by the engine being a sweet pea with a detachable firebox. How long you had this? Uh, about four or five years. Yeah. Built by a guy. Origi in, uh, original ash pan. Hmm? Original ash pan. No, no. All, all that's new. Uh, new inner. Yeah. Uh, that's a new back from Black Gates. Yeah. This. Um, there was a company on eBay that sold uh, stainless steel. It's difficult to record people speaking unless you set it up and get out of the way of other people speaking at the same time, and preferably use a shotgun microphone. But this was just a quick visit, so I didn't take much equipment with me. This is quite a nice thing, very well made too, an electric diesel with a noise generator. And unlike some model noise generators that I've heard, this one was quite loud, with good bandwidth, a little bit of bottom end, not just a tinny rattle. Here the driver is reversing down the siding, past the point that will be then set to reroute him onto the main track. And while on the subject of track and point work, it really is good here. Plenty of points, plenty of track, and safety features on the entrance gate with flashing lights and an alarm. As I mentioned at the beginning, I picked a day when there weren't many people here, as you can see by the amount of cars in the car park. The Sweet Pea is steadily raising steam. And while that's happening, I'd like to show you this. As well as a ground level 7.25 and five inch gauge track, there's also a raised multi-gauge track, and there's even a layout that accommodates garden railway locomotives and rolling stock. This is one of the roundhouse range of engines, and it was running beautifully. Very smooth, with very even beats. Here's another type of small narrow gauge engine. But the only one running at the time I was there was this one. I'm really looking forward to revisiting this club track when it's a bit busier. The great thing about garden railway layouts is the fact that you do not have a giant human being sat behind the engine. I used to own a roundhouse locomotive, it was a Lady Anne. Like this one, it was radio controlled and it ran very well indeed. As the driver was carefully reversing this locomotive back into the siding, there was a bit of a disaster. A full-size train went past. The full-size railway 
runs alongside the miniature one. And I was quite surprised just how many trains went past while I was there. While the sweet pea is still raising steam, have a look at this. This wasn't fitted specifically for model railway engines, but it's a very useful thing to make it easier to load and unload the locos. And yet another train went past in the background. By this stage, the sweet pea was quite close to having working pressure, and if you look carefully, you'll see the owner oiling it up. With his small diesel locomotive in the back of the Bolingo, yet another train went past. In the days of full-size steam, this site would have been a train spotter's paradise. The sweet pea is now in steam and reversing from the siding to join the main line. I never realised how many full-size trains run on a Sunday. It's not the same without pulling passenger carriages, preferably full of passengers. When I used to run around my garden railway, it wasn't too bad because I'm not exactly lightweight. But to be honest, sometimes I used to lightly clamp on the brakes just to make the engine work harder and allow the blast pipe to draw the fire much more efficiently. Off goes the sweet pea around the track. It'll be a while before it gets back because this is quite a long track. Here's another particularly well-made electric locomotive. Me and my godfather over Covid pretty much nice. rebuilt it. Full repaint, full rewire, yeah, looks new good. batteries. Um, sort of been a project ever since we bought it. Mm. The first time we got it home, tried to use it and it instantly blew everything up inside it. Oh. There was no fuses in it. Oh. Um, so we, we yeah, rectified that pretty quickly. Yeah, I bet you did. Here's a shot of the station. No passengers, just the station. This looks like a 7.25 inch gauge Class 25 diesel. I bought a couple of these a few years ago but never got round to finishing either of them. I sold both of them to a friend of mine and I don't think he's done anything with them either. If you want to know more about the York Model Engineering Society, the website address is on screen at the moment and it's well worth a visit. With the Sweet Pea locomotive disappearing into the distance, that's about it for this first short visit. There will be more. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it interesting. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.